A lot of you have talked about my muted palette and I wanted to share some ways that you can mute your colors. So we're going to talk about opaque colors like buff titanium and lavender, but we're also going to talk about complementary colors, which means the colors are across from each other on the color wheel. And then I'm also going to talk about the color neutral tint on how valuable that is having on your palette. So I want to share today's supplies. This is my favorite palette. I love the shell design, but I also like that the back has four sections and you can see I've already got some paints laid out. These paints are from my 18 palette. I will put the link down below for this palette because I talk about it extensively, but I've used colors here and in the video I talk about these are my muting colors over here and these are my texture colors over here and these are pretty traditional colors. So I wanted you to know what my color choices were based off of and it's definitely this palette. I'm also going to be using this Canton Mott Ball watercolor paper. This is cold press 9 by 12 and what I've done here is I've sectioned off a piece and given me like two inches so that I can use my flat brush and just do lines of color so we can see how it mutes it down. I want to be able to show you that as much as possible. I'm going to start us off by talking about complementary colors. Complementary colors are found directly across the color wheel. If you have red, you're going to go right across and that's going to be green. So anytime you want to dull your green or make it a little more grayed, go directly across. Blue and orange violet and yellow, and anything in between. So if you have a yellow green, go directly across and you'll see it's a red violet. I'll talk more about this at, with each color that we go through. So the first thing that I want to share with you is I use buff titanium. These are all Daniel Smith colors and buff titanium is probably the one that I go to the most because it is on every single palette <laughs> of mine. I just can't help it. I love that color and I love it for its muting properties more than anything. We're going to start with serpentine green. Serpentine green is a very bright green. That is this color here. Look how bright. It's a yellow green. Need a little bit of water here and I'm going to just put a big swath, swath of it up here so that we can see the color that it starts out as. Now I can honestly say I don't think I've ever used serpentine green by itself. However, it is one of my favorite greens because it is natural to me. I can add a pink, a purple, a white, a neutral tint, and it happens to go into the most beautiful kind of ochre green, which is what I like to paint with. I've got some serpentine here just by itself. I'm going to place a line of that as well. And I'm going to slowly add some buff titanium. And that was a lot. <laughs> I need a little bit more water. And I want you to see what it did to the color right away. So buff titanium for me takes away the brightness. Do you see that? It takes away the shock of that yellow and it makes it a little more neutral. And I think that's why I love this color so much because it's instant gratification for me. I don't have to sit there and fight with this bright color. I'm gonna add a little bit more buff. Let's see what happens here. You can see it gets a little bit lighter and that's why I like buff titanium. I'm also gonna show you the same thing with lavender. Lavender is another color that I have on my palette purely for muting colors. And lavender makes the most incredible grays for me. I love lavender and a brown because the gray is really lovely. So let's start again with some serpentine. And let's add a touch of purple. You want to be careful here because purple can change the tone. But what you're going to notice is it changes from a bright color to a little richer color, a little deeper. I'm going to add a little more lavender. So whereas the buff let it have a more lighter color, the lavender gave it a little bit darker. 
I am going to splash these because you know how I am. So you can see the difference there. That's the buff. This is the lavender. It took away the brightness, but it left it on the darker side. That's why I have both of them in my palette. So let's look at the complementary color. So I would say that serpentine is more of a yellow green than a darker green. So if I go straight across, that leads me to a red violet. Straight across the color wheel is red violet. Now, if you don't have red violet, you just take violet and add a little more to the red. If you only have red and blue, you can see violet is in the middle, so you add a little more red. See how close it is to the red and how far away it is from the blue? So that's a way to know what colors to mix. And I don't have all those colors on my palette, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take some red and a touch of blue. This is French Ultramarine, a deep scarlet, and I want it to look violet. There we go, we're getting a nice red violet there. So now I'm gonna take some more serpentine. And let's add just a touch of the violet, red violet. And you can see that it dulled it and watch the color that this comes out. Look at that. So for me, these are my favorite kind of mixes because they give me a more natural look I can paint nature with that. I can't paint nature with that because to me this is more realistic than this color. That's the complementary. Now I want to show you neutral tint. If you don't know what neutral tint is, I use it in my Cultivated Color class as a natural shading color. By that it's a little bit darker. It allows you to take the color and make a natural shade. So if you are struggling with what color you should add for shadows or to deepen something, say you want to deepen a red and an apple, neutral tint is your friend. Neutral tint works on all colors. You'll see here I'm going to try it with a yellow, a blue, and a pink so that you can see what it does for it. It is very dense so I'm going to take a little bit here. There we go. And this is neutral tint. So look at the difference here versus here. You can see it's a little darker. I'm gonna take just a little bit more to neutral tint. You can see I took a little too much there. There we go. And look at that. Just by changing the color, I want you to see that. So this is buff titanium. This is lavender. This is the complementary, and this is neutral tint. By just adding those four colors, it changed this color to more muted colors. And these are all colors that I can use. It took me a while to figure out what consistently changed my colors to where I could use them just by taking my brush, putting it down, and then just mixing. So I want something that's easy like that. I don't wanna mix a whole big puddle and I know Buff Titanium for me was a go from the first start of my palette because I had it on my palette right away. I also had Lavender. It took me a while to get used to mixing the complementary colors, but when I started doing that, it really gave my paintings a lot richer color. And this is why. The Buff Titanium and the Lavender both have a bit of white in it, so they're a little more opaque. Where the Complementary is gonna give you, I think, the purest color mix. The neutral tint has a little bit of darkness. It also gives you a pure color, but to me, it's a little deeper and richer, but that's neutral tint too. I'm using it as a shade color. So let's try this on Opera Pink. And if you're not familiar with Opera Pink, it is this really bright color. It is, whoa. <laughs> That's all I can say is whoa here. So let's do the initial swatch up here and you can see it's just almost blinding. But this is a great color to try because it will show you the difference. So here's my first swatch of the color. We're gonna add buff titanium to this. Oops, a little too much there. Adding back some there we go. 
that's better. So I want you to instantly see how it has almost taken away the brightness. Do you see that? We're going to add a little more. Look what it did to the tone. I'm going to add a little bit more because this is a color that definitely needs several layers here. Here we go. You can really see it change with that one. It took away the harshness of that. So when you look at this, you're like, that's much better. <laughs> this is like shockingly pink. Now let's do the same thing with purple. I have to be careful with purple here because purple can change the color. So I'm going to grab some opera pink, touch of purple. Let's try to do better this time. There we go. You can see it's taken it down just a little bit. Let's add a little bit more lavender. Ooh, that's a nice dullness there. So look at the difference. That's the buff. Here's the lavender. It's starting to change this to the lavender side. Be careful with that. I want it to still be on the pink side. So let's go on to the pink now and let's try to find it's complementary. If you're looking at the red, would you look at between the red and the violet or the red and the orange? To me, I would look between the red and the red violet. If we go to red and green and red violet over here, it's a little bit here. So I would think it's more yellow green than red. Here, go right across. So it's more yellow green than green, which is perfect because we have serpentine. So let's add a touch of serpentine here. And do you see what it did to the color? Look what it did to that. Let me make that a little thicker. We're going to add a little more green. Such a difference. Now I could paint with that. <laughs> I definitely could paint with that color. This is what I mean. So it took away it took away the whiteness or the brightness of the added white here, where the complementary makes it a really beautiful color. Wait till you see this with the neutral tint. I'm gonna put it on here pretty heavy because neutral tint is very thick. A little bitty touch of neutral tint. You can see it's just a little darker. And I add a little bit more of the neutral. And look at, this is the shading color of that. Think about that in a design, how beautiful that would look. You could also take the complementary and go a little darker by adding a little bit more green and get a nice shading color as well. Let's go on to the Hansa Yellow Medium. A really bright, lovely yellow. Yellows are not my favorite color. I prefer a raw sienna than a bright yellow. Personal preference. Gonna add some buff titanium. It took away the brightness right away. Makes it more of a yellow I would use. Let's add a little bit more. Look at the difference of this versus that. So to me, anytime I use buff titanium, it makes it a little more earthy for me. It makes it a little more palatable. It makes it less intense. Now, if you were painting flowers, you probably would want a little bit of that intenseness, 
you might want to start here and shade with a little bit of buff just so that it deepens it. You can see this is a nice shading color for that. So if you did this as a transparent layer and then did this over it, it would look really, really nice and it would give you a lot of soft layering. Let's add a little bit of lavender now. Now lavender on the color wheel. Lavender is straight across or violet. So that's going to be a little bit of the complementary as well. So I want to be careful by not adding too much lavender because it can turn it gray right away. Let's add just a little bit more lavender. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> To me, it starts to go almost to the green side. I don't know if you can see the difference here. I'll bring you a close up when this is finished. But you can see it's turning just a tad green. I'm going to bring a little bit more lavender in. Look at that. I love the richness that that lavender brings. Now we don't have to do a complimentary because we did lavender, but let's add a bit of neutral tint. Because neutral tint is extremely dark and this is extremely light, you want to be very, very careful. So I'm just going to take the tiniest touch. You can see that was too much. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is lift a little bit more yellow. There we go. Let's start here with neutral. Let's go to that darker puddle now. And let's go just a tad darker. I want to see what color this takes us to. Look at that. Are you seeing the green now? Let's go just a little bit more. I want you to think of shading daffodils. When I was first doing watercolor, I had the hardest time coming up with a color to shade the daffodils because if you add too much brown, it looks like it's dying. You know, like the like decay is setting in. If you add too much green, you just get a yellow green. When I discovered neutral tint and this color, and you can see from here to here was neutral tint slightly adding it, that's when I discovered this color. It's like a green, brown, yellow, and it is the perfect color for shading yellow flowers. Because if you've ever looked at a yellow flower, it has a hint of green, even though to your eye it really looks brown at first. But to me, this is the perfect shading color. So if you're struggling with finding yellows to shade with, I would definitely pick up some neutral tint for yourself because it is a game changer on your palette. We're going to go to blue now, and I am using French Ultramarine Blue. You can see, maybe you can't. <laughs> it is really an intense blue, which is why I picked it. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Now this is a color, again, I would n almost never use it by itself because of the intensity. Let's add some buff titanium to it. Just a little bit. Do you see that it took a little bit of the intensity away? We're going to add a little bit more. I need to add more blue. Sorry about that. Now we're going to add a little bit more. To me, this is a blue I can get behind. <laughs> I love it for shadows. I love it for cloudy days. It's great for water. Look at that. Compare that to that. Huge difference. Let's use some French gray 
French Ultramarine with the Lavender and see what happens here. Now Lavender and the Ultramarine are pretty much on the same color, right? They're both a bluish color. Because blue is in the Lavender mix. Little more lavender. You can see it dulling it down just a little bit. This is a color I would use for the sky. I would not use that color. I would use this color. I would also use this color. <laughs> Either one with the lavender or the buff, I like them both. Now as far as complementary, we've got blue across the color wheel is orange. I'm going to use the orange here on my palette and this is Quincyenna. So let me get some blue here. There we go. These are my favorite blue mixes because I don't know if you see that. It's more of a dark night kind of blue. I'm going to add a little bit more orange to the mix. Isn't that gorgeous? Again, the complementary I would definitely use. Let's go into the blue and neutral tint. Just a touch. It's just taking away the dullness. Let's add a little bit more neutral tint. Lovely. Ooh. Look at the richness there. If we take a look at, the, at them, you can see all of them work by taking these bright colors and subduing them. Which way you choose to do that is totally up to you because for me, it's about the ease of it, which is why Buff Titanium is a must on my palette. But if you are wanting a natural shader, definitely neutral tint. You can see all the bottom values are the neutral tint. You just have to make sure on something like this and this that you don't really change it to the neutral tint. It's fairly neutral in color, but to me it still leans a little blue. You can see that this even changed it to a little bit purple. You just have to be aware. Every neutral tint and every brand is a little bit different. Whichever one you're using is gonna work the same. It's just going to give you a different value. Let me bring you up so you can see this. I'll do two at a time here. So this was the Serpentine and the Opera Pink. This was the straight color. The next two lines are with Buff Titanium. The next two lines are with Lavender. The next two lines here and here are with complementary colors. And then the last two are with Neutral Tint. Doesn't that give you a nice range of colors? And then on this one, you've got Hansa Yellow Medium, French Ultramarine, the original color. Then you've got here, this has four lines of Buff Titanium. This one has two. And then it goes into Lavender. And then it goes into the complementary color. And then it goes into Neutral Tint. I absolutely love this color. I actually like these colors throughout. And then on this one, you have the Buff Titanium here, the Lavender here, the complementary color here, and you can see how it shifted it. I love this color blue. <laughs> and then the neutral tint here. You can see how rich and dark it got. If you're wanting to learn more about colors and color mixing, 
I have a course called Cultivated Color and I've done a little commercial about it here. This is Cultiva Cultivated Color. We fill an entire sketchbook with colors, color mixing, learning about complementary colors, learning about neutral tint. This whole book started with four colors. So the primary, yellow, red, and blue, plus neutral tint, and we created over 300 colors. The link for this course will be in the description box in case you want to take studying a little further. I show you step-by-step step every page of this book. I hope this exercise has inspired you to try muting your colors. I can guarantee that it will make a difference in your painting because if everything is all this bright, you don't know where to look. But if you're looking at something like these ones at the bottom, they're a little more toned down and don't really demand your attention like these bright ones do. So if you're struggling where you're not really being able to focus or find a central point of interest, I can guarantee you everything is fighting with each other. By toning down one or two colors, like this, this, or this, it will make that shine. I guarantee it. If you have any questions about the exercise I shared today, please list them in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. If you were inspired by today's content, please like, comment, or subscribe. It will help my channel grow and I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.